the border thing. Welcome to Life Talk Burrito with your hosts, me, Michelle Gunn, and Shreyas Kaushik. Today, we are going to welcome special guest, Sylvia Markovic. Hi, Sylvia. Hi, Michelle. Nice to see you again. Thanks for your invite. Thank you awesome. And now, we... we uh, we might be having some technical difficulties as you know um that's what we're getting nowadays when everybody's going uh virtual so please bear with us and all those people who we are so grateful to join us in the audience please drop your name and where you're from say hello and as you have questions please post them we'll be happy to address any questions so, Shreyas, did you want to make some uh, opening remarks or greet the people? I hope um, I'm audible because my connection is a bit unstable today. Perfect. So, uh, thank you everyone for joining us on our live show, The Life Talk Burrito. And we have our dear friend and special guest, Sylvia, who is an emotion set coach and a hypnotherapist, joining us from Germany. And she has got some exciting tips and some fun bits to share with us. Welcome, Sylvia. Yeah, really, I have. I didn't know that. Uh, okay. <laughs> I, I I like it when I when I surprised about some things. No, I'm just kidding. Everything's fine. Yeah. Thank you very much, Ria. Do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, and what you do? Yes, of course. Um, my background, my professional background is that I started in sale, in sale and retail, and I worked there over, well, I think it was so eight years, eight, nine years, and then I had the big opportunities to work there also then the last years as a department store manager, and it was really funny, but it was also a lot of work, and one day, I thought to myself, oh, maybe <laughs> it's not uh, the end for what I'm looking for. And I was also thinking that I don't earn the money what I'm working. So it was not, um, yeah, it wasn't in, in the balance. And then I wanted to get more money, what I did not get. And then I said uh, goodbye. And uh, I think it was one week later, I uh i struggled with bad emotions and bad thoughts because i was thinking oh my god it was bad decision what have i done oh my god da, 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 da. yeah and then i uh struggled with it and i got a burnout and i was uh, diagnosed with depression and so <laughs> something changed and um, it was also diagnosed that i had a burnout uh while i worked there but it was, yeah, it was not the time that the, that the medical was, had the things to, to see that it was a burnout. They just gave me, uh, they just gave me some medicals and said I need to sleep a little bit and then is everything fine. This it was a half year ago from this and yes, and uh, with this starts everything to change and um due to happiness from my from my ex-boyfriend i came to coaching because i have i didn't know where to go i had uh, also a job after this as an office management and then also um it was office management and also i, I was the, yeah from a, from a general type something it wasn't very long and it was everything what I was thinking, this is not what fulfilled my life. And, mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I was unhappy at, at this time. And due to, yeah, had, uh, circumstances, I came to, to coaching and I fell in love with it. 
and um, I started with um, communication coaching. It was also something what I learned um, from retail, from sales and, and retail, because we had a lot of workshops with it, a lot of seminars, because we needed to, to know how to sell and how to communicate with, uh, with the employees. And so I had a background from this and I could start it with it. And yeah, and then I got some certifications about um, a trainer so I can train other people and it go on and go on. And I um, was also the last three years a, a career coach and I had a lot of workshops about to, to help people in career tips. And uh, it makes a lot of fun, but then I came to a point in my life where, when, I, when I was also, when I gave everything, I have nothing more to improve in the workshops. And then I said to myself, what, what I have um, learned here in, in the workshop is that a lot of people struggle not really with, with mindset or with career tips or something like that. It's more that most of people are struggling with emotions. And yeah, so it starts that I changed um, my kind of coaching. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so that's my background. <laughs> that was a great introduction that you shared about yourself. And yeah, it does make sense to, you know, once you embrace coaching, you'll definitely fall in love with it. So let me bring you to the present and ask you, what is one biggest challenge that you faced in the past year because of pandemic? And how did it impact the way you do coaching? Oh yeah, that what I needed to challenge was um, like everyone is. Yes, it uh, came to the to the first lockdown. <laughs> I needed to change my kind of coaching because I I wasn't a digital coach. I was a presented coach. I um, I gave a workshop one by one, presented in an office, or I was uh, in, in in companies or in academies where I had the workshops. So it was, I was digital. So I needed to change this and um, everything was canceled. And then I was, then I thought to myself, okay, uh, the last three years I was a career coach. <laughs> so I need to give myself the tips what I would give to my coaches. And so, yeah, I coached myself <laughs> to change everything. And it took four weeks to change everything. Yeah. It was my big challenge, and then um, due to this, um, yeah, everything came to me, what I needed. Isn't that great when we finally listen to ourselves, the advice we give to everybody else and the guidance we give to everyone else? <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course, but, but this is also how I coach my coaches because mm -hmm. I don't want that my coaches are... Um, that they need me after a year again. Uh, for me, it's the, the best way when I gave them the advices, how they can help themselves. This is, I, I don't want to be a coach for, for lifelong. This is, then I do something wrong. And um, I know that we, due to the neuroscience, I know that we have, um, that we are able to coach ourselves due to our mirror neurons and, um, this is how I constructed uh, a topic also for my clients in the workshop, how they can help themselves when they struggle with some, with some things. And this is when you, when you give uh, a, your best friend, when you, when you struggle with something and you ask your best friends for, for some advices, your best friend will give you the advices, but only from the point of the own view, because we are living on, on our own aisle. Yeah. And, when you give yourself the same question on the on the way that you are your best friend asking the same question for yourself, <laughs> then you can coach yourself. It's the it's the easiest way. Just ask yourself when when a best friend come to me with a, with a strange struggles, what advice I would give to him, and then you write everything down and you have all advices. Awesome. What would you say is the um, life lesson you learned from the challenges of 2020? Oh, yeah, there are. Yeah, what I have a lot of this. I think we we don't only get um, 
when we have a question, we don't have only one answer. Sometimes we get several answers for, for one question. I think this is also what what I what I know have learned from the last year is that I can that I can really achieve everything until I'm doing it. <laughs> it's it's yeah, it's banal, not stupid. It's more banal, but um, yeah. So it is sometimes I I know that I'm a I'm a coach, but also I'm I'm a human, and um, sometimes I also have to deal with some struggles and some some minds. And um, what I have learned last week is really to 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 hear on my own. I um, I've done a lot of meditation last year, what helped me a lot, and I have learned the last eight more month more about myself than the last two of them. And um, yeah. <laughs> Finish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think that resonates with um, most of us, indeed, even mm -hmm. with both Michelle and myself, the amount of learning that has happened probably over the last six months, I think that stands so deep rooted and it is mostly positive with us being coaches and having the ability to really coach our own self and practice what we preach. So Michelle, just coming to you briefly, is that the same for you as well? So what is one thing that you have learned in the last six months, which will help you see 2021 from a positive side? Um, I think one of the one of the biggest takeaways I have from the um, pandemic so far is that everything that seems like a hurdle is really something being presented as an opportunity. And it's really the way that we perceive it. If we look at everything as um, a block instead of a challenge for something greater to come, it will really um, stall us. But if we look at the opportunity side, then it really brings us more opportunities to grow, to do more things. I really felt limited before the pandemic. And in the pandemic, I was forced, <laughs> forced like many of us, to learn new skills and to show that I don't have as many limits as I thought I had. So that, that would be for me. What about you, Shreyas? For me, the biggest change uh, personally is embracing social media because I wasn't a person who was very comfortable going online. Yes, I had my Facebook account set up, but it was barely active. Uh, so it was because of the pandemic that I ventured into LinkedIn and found you uh, to start with. And we ended up uh, having a professional relationship as a coach and coachy. And then I started to, to network with people, met Sylvia, and we also collaborated on a webinar together, which was quite successful, considering that it was my very first webinar. And Sylvia had some great content to, to share. So that is how it has been for me. And seven, eight months later, here I am doing live shows with you, having our own podcast, and also trying to put out some valuable content so that when people read them, they get inspired and motivated to at least make positive sense of the situation they are in. So that is my biggest takeaway or the biggest lesson learned, which is to embrace digital media and also set up my business totally online, which gives me the flexibility and also the freedom to reach a wider audience. So with that, Sylvia, the next question is from the variety of experiences you have had, right from being in a corporate, then shifting yourself into coaching, you undergoing coaching yourself, what would be one thing that you'd like to change going forward in 2021? What I would like to change. <laughs> this is um ah, this is a really this is a really yes yeah now I understand why you why you said why that I'm sitting on a hot seat. It's it's really hot here. <laughs> and 
the thing is i change every time every time when i reach uh one point i um i i very very self reflected and i'm i look always not not every night but i look always one week or two times a, a week what i have reached and when things are getting yeah not really wrong when when things are working this is really fine when things are not really working then i'm looking what i can improve so i cannot i cannot deal with this to to say it on one point but um maybe maybe what i want to change for my professional point of view not really for my personal uh, for my professional point of view what i want to change is to go more viral to be more present on on social media this is what i really want to change in 2021 and this is what why what, what is also good that we have for the OCC now it's advertising okay <laughs> <laughs> and uh, for for a good point that I, that I can start with the OCC that's the online coaching congress uh, we start uh, um, in the end of January the, the 3rd January so for my bad english and uh, where where the people have the opportunity to see me more and i started with youtube but it's more yeah i'm like more like a bad stepmother for youtube now but um on linkedin i want to be more presented and also then uh, for, for youtube to give more ad yeah not really advice more tips for for depression because this is what i what i saw the last three months is that I saw a lot of people that they are struggling with depression and um, for me it's a hard thing to help people and I 2018 I was a host on online depression congress and I think I have really great tips for the people for free <laughs> uh, for for the people that they can get um, really great tips from experts I have interviewed from uh, from from doctors from uh, scientists and I think it will be really really great and this is after the OCC what I what I want to do to help people um, against depression that was a great uh, change and we are really fortunate to have been part of uh, the OCC and I'm sure there is so much value that you can get from OCC and which makes me more excited and I certainly look forward to the big launch. So to our audience, if you are viewing uh, either on LinkedIn, Facebook or YouTube, and if you have some reinvention stories to share about yourself, please do go ahead and keep the chat going. And if you're watching the replay, make sure to put that in the comments and we will try our best to respond to each one of them. So Michelle, anything that you have had interesting things to really reflect upon that you'd like to change for 2021? You're on mute. I am on mute. <laughs> See, live fun. Um, probably mm -hmm. like most people, um, I would like the pandemic to go away. <laughs> Let's have an end to COVID or at least make it manageable so we can carry on like, um, normal people um but besides that for the greater good i personally would like to make even more of an impact in people's lives to make people find their value um, through my coaching through collaborations like our podcast this live show where we're sharing great people through the online coaching congress um, that sylvia has put on um, through core mentors association that I belong to. I just really uh, get great joy out of helping people find and live their purpose, that they know they have value to share to make the world a better place. And I want to do that more in 2021. What about you, Shreyas? Well, first of all, that is a great um, change that you're expecting to see in the world which probably would be my top priority as well to 
just to wish that the pandemic goes away and we all get back to our normal lives. Uh, but one thing that I'd certainly love to see change in 2021 is people being more aware and then making an effort to understand their own strengths and challenges, which in turn will really help them prepare for any situation that we might have to face as a consequence of pandemic or otherwise. So there is um, an atmosphere of positivity that keeps going. And with the help of people like uh, yourself and so many others that are contributing to the betterment of the world, I think it is imperative to say that we all should stay united, stay positive and fight this as one because it is something that has affected each and every one of us. It doesn't see religion, gender, caste, country or whatever. It affects each one of us the same way. So I would really love to see people being more aware and trying to bring that into their own community so that it spreads around uh, in the world and we get to see some positive times very soon. And I think we have a question from Alpesh. Yeah. So he asked how to be consistent and he is afraid that he lags behind because of consistency. What do you have got to say, Sylvia? How you can be constant and um, the, I would start to, to ask if physical everything is fine because a lot of when we have a deficit on minerals or we don't drink a lot of water or we don't sleep really, really nice, then the physical part starts always that we are uh, not concentrated or when we don't eat the, the good things. I would start with the physical thing. Then the next thing is uh, to look when we are not constant. It's also when we don't are um, motivated then to look um, how where, where I work. Is my desktop um, ready to work? Um, when I'm not consistent, then uh, it can be that I also don't have the, 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 the environment, environment, damn Sylvia. <laughs> and, <laughs> and people who are not surrounded me with my thing, this is also demotivated and what can also be a lack of you know, consistency. And then you can also ask yourself what uh, what brings me to the point that I'm more consistent. Maybe sometimes are uh, just the question, the easiest question to find an answer. When you have, when you know that you are struggling with consistency, then ask yourself what what is the lack of consistency, and then trust the pictures what your brain brings to you, and trust also your feelings. Then I have the next question for, for, for you is, do you know for yourself what is right for you and what is wrong, how it feels for you? A lot of people don't have the, the body feeling to, to know, oh, this is my truth, this is not my truth. So this is maybe the first point to clear this from your body. So when you, when you don't know this, I can say you one easy way to how you can how you can um, know it but they are just some some points what you need to clear so physical that is, uh, what a lot of people don't know is that when you uh, struggling with minerals when you don't have enough vitamin d vitamin c when you don't have enough b vitamins i mean we we have here in germany now uh, snowy we don't have uh, i had the last two weeks no sunshine i needed to to get sunshine vitamin d through supplement so i had i don't have it now the, the little bottle so this is this, this is just oil mct this is a, a special oil mct it's a coconut oil what is um what is included with vitamin d to that the body get the the minerals and when you don't uh, when you don't want to buy just minerals because you don't know if it's a physical lack then go to your doctor because this is uh, your, on your doctor you can um, get the results from your blood test 
and a lot of people struggling and this is also what a lot of people don't know that we we have a lot of fruits but a lot of people struggling with a with a lack of vitamin c and this is what also gives us bad thoughts <laughs> yeah i'd like to i'd like to add a little bit to that i think Alpesh, that's a, a great question and if you're really struggling with consistency really maybe consider reaching out and getting into an engagement with your own coach who can ask specific questions to your situation because we all can give great general advice but for it to be specific to you you would really need to uh, have that working relationship with someone um, for instance do you have goals and what does consistency look like to you because I think consistency for different people looks different. And in which way are you being inconsistent? Like Shreyas was talking about he want his um, building up his social media. He became more consistent in that. That was a specific goal that he had. So I think that's important. And if it's something that you're truly struggling with, you might want to um, look for a coach of your own and engage with the coach. Yeah. Totally agree. And if I have to add something, I would just pull up what you both said, which makes total sense. Uh, so where you brought up a good point about um, looking at consistency, both physically and emotionally. And Michelle, you brought out a good point in defining what consistency means, because consistency for me is to show up. Uh, if I take the example of social media, for me, consistency is showing three times a week and doing it time and again. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that I need to be there seven days of the week, 365 days of the year. So trying to define what consistency means and taking into account both your physical and emotional constraints and working on uh, identifying what is the cause that you know, keeps you from being consistent. I think that is the best way going forward. So great points mentioned. And so the next uh, thing, uh, when I see you, Sylvia, I, you, you're full of fun, you're full of information. So what is your trick behind integrating fun and key information into whatever webinars or whatever um, seminars that you put out for your, for your audience? So how do you integrate fun and the key lessons that you want your audience to take? Oh, I think it's also part of my personality because I don't, I, I want to have fun in my life. <laughs> I, I love it to have fun in my life. And um, uh, I don't want to be so serious because until I start to be serious, I have the, I have the feeling that I also start to be boring. And a lot of people want to be serious because they think I, it's just, it's not regular. It's just what I sometimes see on people that they want to be serious because they that the people see they, that they have a big knowledge. Yeah, the more, the more you are serious, the more people are seeing you that you have a big knowledge. And yeah, and I like sometimes the way that the people are thinking that I'm stupid. And when they are talking to me, then they're asking me after that what uh, what I have studied. And then this is for me really funny because that is the that is the, another way. Because you have you can have a lot of knowledge, you can give a lot of knowledge on a funny way. And um, this, but this is, yeah, I think it's also a, a part of my of my personality. It's when when I see. When I have the opportunity, when I, I'm also sometimes audience to others, and when I have the opportunity to see to see a webinar or a seminar with with the same topic from someone who who do it on a funny way or someone who do it on a serious, boring way, I would always choose the funny way. <laughs> so why do I do it? when I have the opportunity to do it as a coach on the other side, why do, why should I do it then seriously and boring? So maybe also, it's total sense. <laughs> this, 
this experience. <laughs> yeah, and I, I just like it to laugh. And I can laugh about myself. Yeah. When you when the camera is over, you sometimes you would think I'm crazy and <laughs> also what I like. Yes, I like to be crazy. Uh, so to summarize what you just said, um, so what I take from you is that coaching is an art and you have every liberty to express that art in a way which resonates with you, which makes you feel happy. And there's no better way than speaking to the soul of your audience when it comes to coaching, because that is what you really want. People have to take in let it sink in and start working and take action. So it really makes sense if you want to take, if you want to have fun, if people feel crazy, it's okay because once they work with you, they will really understand that it is your way of uh, expressing the art of coaching and that the results are there to be seen once they start implementing their action steps. Yeah. So yeah, I, how do you do it, I, Michelle? Because, yeah. Sorry, I'm sorry, can you repeat that, Trish? <laughs> well, I just wanted to know about uh, your style of coaching. Do you use a similar kind of way where you talk to the soul of audience are you, or you just go all out? Just let yourself be open and just let uh, the audience see what value you have and start taking action. Well, I think for me, um, I'm generally pretty much an open book um what you see is what you get good or bad um but as far as when i'm in a coaching or like a talk show or a podcast it's really going to depend on the audience or the coachee because we want to make sure they're comfortable so when you're dealing with either an individual or a group of people you kind of want to mimic how they are. If they're very serious and you're very goofy, um, probably won't come off as well. Um, but again, <laughs> probably like Sylvia, I'm going to be drawn to be a little bit more relaxed and maybe a little silly and fun because that's more my personality um, as long as I'm not scared stiff. But um, yeah, I think it really depends on the audience and again, what kind of information we're relaying also because if it's a really really serious topic with a bunch of serious people well i might not be the person for that but <laughs> but we might want to be a little bit more <laughs> stern in relaying mm -hmm. that information what about you shreya i for one agree with you both because i want the atmosphere to be as relaxed and as open as possible so that the client is motivated to really express in a safe and open manner so they don't hold back any details and even when i work with executives they really want to stay relaxed it's just a misconception when you when other coaches tell that when you're working with executives it is often serious but that is not the case with me at all because that is how i attract my executive clients it is because i help them feel relaxed, stay calm. And even though they sit with me only for 30 to 45 minutes, I think that 45 minutes of relaxation is what propels them to perform well going through the week and you know, literally relieve themselves of any stress during those 45 minutes. And most often from the feedback I hear, they say that they are their own true selves in those 45 minutes and they don't have to necessarily act being strict or show up as someone who means work and who means business so in a way it's uh, it's again it's a coaching style so the more easy and relaxed you are i think it's better for your client and it all depends again on your personal style because you can't change your personality and you don't want to uh, impersonate someone who really is not you. You're right. unique and you'll have your own strengths as a coach. So as long as you stick to your core values and believe uh, that you're core upholding your core beliefs, I think that is what will make you a great coach. So which brings us almost to our last question. So Sylvia, if I ask you about what legacy does Sylvia stand for, what would your response be? Uh, well, Lacey, I would 
would say that um, what one of my one of my biggest goals are that I want to build emotional bridges to to us people. I think this is what is really 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 <laughs> really important for us. Um, I I think. Um, and what I also see to, to a lot of people that we are struggling so emotional and more in a bad way than in a positive way, what makes me sometimes sad. And I think it will be better when the people are understand their own emotions so that they, they can deal with it. A lot of conflicts are because a lot of conflicts also in companies are that there are adults sitting together and when you hear how they talked to each other when they have a hot discussion then you have sometimes the feeling that there are children talking to each other oh, give me this give me more this i want this one i want this one and um that they have also sometimes uh very strange kind of um, personal values that they don't want to give it up for to be uh, together, emotional also together. And um, this is also what I what I really want to change for for the people. Just grow emotionally. A lot of people just did not grow emotional. They grow. Mentally, they grow. Physically, they grow with knowledge. But emotionally, a lot of people are, a lot of adults are on a stand from a 70-year-old. That, that's what I had with the manager. I was shocked with it. It's not that the, that the manager did not want it. In, and it's not on all the way that he's emotional on a 17-year-old um, teenager. It's, it's just that he is on a 17 year old uh, um, teenager on a relationship way. This is why he could not get um, um, a love relationships you, with, with 40 years and because he did not grow emotionally. He, <laughs> and this is what, what people, what, what I want to, to change the, is the emotion set from a lot of people and to build emotional bridges that people are understand how other people are feeling. We have a lot of people they are not empathic enough. A lot of people, they are so in their own on their own aisle, on uh, on their own emotional eye that they don't let others want to let feel others. Then they have uh, then they build a lot of barriers. I don't want that anyone hurts me. Then they don't want to love anymore. And this is something what's, what's really sad because um, it's good when you, when you, when you, I know that it's the, a lot of people that they, that they cannot understand it, but it's good when you are hurt at one, one time because of love, uh, because of one bad relationship, then you have never loved. Yeah. Mm -hmm just to give an just to give an example and yeah i think this this is one of my biggest goal to build emotional bridge so any thoughts uh, you'd like to add michelle no i think it sounds very interesting you know i'm happy to be able to watch this journey take place absolutely so from what you shared sylvia it's clearly evident that you're already aligned with Sylvia as a person and Sylvia as an emotion set coach and the legacy you want to leave behind, which is to build emotional bridges. I think that is a great uh, want. And as Michelle said, it's a pleasure to watch you grow and be associated with you, collaborating with you. And I'm sure we will be really interested to see you perform well and wish you all the best for OCC. We are very excited for the big launch by the end of January. 
Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for your great questions. For sitting on the hot seat, I think I need to change now the seat here. <laughs> in the, in the yeah, thank you. Right. So it would be great if anyone else has any comments, we're here to answer them. So. No comments, no questions. It looks like there's no more questions. So. <laughs> awesome. So the best way to reach you if our audience wants some guidance and support or hire you as a coach. Uh, Sylvia, if, if people want to get in touch with you, what's the best way? Oh, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, they can, they can go on my website, sylviamarkovic.de. This is my personal web website where the people can, talk, uh, can, talk, can contact me one, two, three again. And then uh, also on LinkedIn, there's my, uh, they can send me a message, um, a PM, a direct message. And also about, I think it goes now uh, due to um, the online coaching congress, or just send me an email on contact at sylviamarkovic.de. These are, these are the ways where people can contact me for coaching, for an emotions at coaching. Yeah. Of, as a hy hypnotherapist. Now I'm also a hypnotherapist. What is really sure. funny. I like it. <laughs> it makes really, really fun. So, Shreds, look at my ass, look at my ass. <laughs> I'm just kidding, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Can you do that online, Sylvia? I'm wondering if maybe you can hypnotize some of our um, participants in the audience. <laughs> oh, I, I, I will see. I will see it next week. I mean, a lot of people think when when you are a hypnotherapist that you it's not like the show. It's you can you can also do it online. I will see it next week um, how it how it works because when you when uh, for the hypnotherapist you also need to touch sometimes the people for to to enter yeah and this is what what I can what I cannot do online but there are a lot of other um, tricks tricks how uh, how it can work so and. I'm also uh, a, a coach, so I know on which way how I can do this both together for for the hypnotherapist, for the online, and also with the with the questions I use as a coach, and also for the when I work with affirmations together. So I can do this also everything online. Awesome! That's great. Well, we thank you so much for joining us, Sylvia, and sharing all the information. Um, I know I got a lot out of this. I really appreciate you taking your time out and spending it with us. Thank you for being here in your show. Awesome. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Shreya. <laughs> is it so now better when I go no, ne near to the microphone? It's louder for sure. Ooh. Have you seen last week I, I, I shared some videos for, from ASMR? Oh, I'll have to check where that out. Where the people are working with sounds that they're, that they're yeah. Oh. This is so, oh, I love it. How the, how the, um, <laughs> people are working with it when they're making sounds then i'm so like 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 a kitten then i'm so Meow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it's well, awesome how, how relaxing it is. yeah i have to check that out. it looks like our pal shreyas is having some big technical difficulties so oh let's see he might come back to say goodbye <laughs> are you back to say goodbye oh. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, Sylvia, thank you very much. Um, it's been really great listening to you. We have had a lot to take in, and I'm sure the audience feels the same way too. 
And for our audience, thank you so much for showing up. And if you still have any questions, please do go ahead and drop it in the comments. We will come back and answer it to the best of our abilities. And the video will also be available on YouTube. So please go ahead, share your comments, share your thoughts. And if you have any feedback whatsoever, please do share it with either Michelle or myself. And do connect with Sylvia to get more insights and have some fun. So thank you for joining us. It's been a pleasure. Thank yeah. you. Happy Wednesday, everyone. Yeah, happy Wednesday. Mm -hmm.